Hey guys, welcome back. So I got the Morphe 35R palette in the mail the other day and I've been dying to do a review and a tutorial using it for you guys. So before we get into this video, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Katie and I do videos like this pretty much every week. I'm getting better about doing them more often. Um, we've had some craziness going on so I haven't been able to film in the past couple weeks, but I am going to be having a bunch of videos coming out um, here soon. So. Please stay tuned, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do, and give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see, and comment down below videos that you would like to see in the future. So if you are interested in my thoughts on the Morphe 35R palette and want to see a demo using it, then let's get started. Okay, so in complete honesty, I almost did not buy this palette. I thought it looked beautiful. I saw Jaclyn Hill swatch it in her Snapchat, and I was like, that thing looks gorgeous. But then on close examination to it, just on their website, it looked so similar to the Morphe 35O palette. If you don't know what that palette is, I am gonna lift them up and kind of compare them for you. But it is one of their most popular palettes and it has sold out multiple times. But the two of them just looked so similar and I was just thought, you know, why do I need a palette that looks exactly like this other palette? It didn't seem like there was anything really groundbreaking about it, so I kept I actually put it in my shopping cart and then removed it. I was like, I don't want this, this doesn't make sense. And then I put it back in because I started to look at it and I noticed that there was a lot of um, more purpley shades and a lot of more like mauve shades rather than just oranges and rusts. So I thought that it might be different enough that I'd wanna try it. And it honestly reminded me of a combination between their 35O palette and their 35W palette. I do not have the 35W palette, but it is something that I've been eyeing in the past, and so I thought it would be a nice combination. I will be honest, these palettes, the 35O and the 35R, are very similar. There are some differences, obviously, as I said, but it's not like anything that's completely different, so if you have one, you need the other, you really don't, um, but if you're you know, obsessed with makeup like I am, you kind of justify it and make excuses, so I have them both now. <laughs> Um, so this is the 35O right here. You can see that there are a lot of browns, a lot of rusts, um, and a lot of oranges. And so that's the main feature, obviously, the 35O. Um, so the main feature is just those orangey, rusty shades. And I love this palette. I'm going to be honest, I don't use it as often as I thought I would. I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes, so I'm constantly trying new things out. And this is the 35R right here. And uh, this is the 35R right here. As you can see, there's a little more of like mauve purpley tones in there, which I really like. I have green eyes, so I think it really accents that really nicely. What I do really like about this palette is that they have separated their mattes all on this side and all of their shimmers on this side. So it's easy to just pick out what you need. And there are a few satins in here, which I really like. There are a lot of really good transition shades in here, which is great because I feel like no palette is complete without those transition shades. I will swatch a couple of these shimmers for you because they are unreal. The formulas on these shadows are incredible. I am really, really impressed. The palette retails for about $22. And then you can always use one of those 10% discount codes that you find on other people's YouTube channels or on blogs or whatever. So it brings it down a few dollars. The one thing I really dislike about Morphe is that they charge for shipping on everything unless you spend, I think, $100. And I'm not going to spend $100 with Morphe every single time I shop with them. But their shipping at a base is about 8 or $9, which to me is so annoying. I'm one of those people that hates to pay for shipping. So that is a little bit of a downfall. And with a 10% discount code and the shipping, it brings it up to about $33, which isn't bad. It's just not that $22 price point that it started out at. Um, but all in all, I will say the formula of these shadows is incredible. I'm so impressed. And I will go as far as to say that I think it's better than the 35O. The way they blend out is incredible. I love the satin shades. There's a purpley satin shade that I'm just obsessed with. And I think that they did an incredible job. I think that they blend super nicely. I think they're very buttery. I don't think anything gets really muddy. I think each shade retains its own pigment and color without, you know, blending too much in the other one that you can't 
tell which shade is which and I'm just really impressed honestly and I think I like this palette more than the 35O and not only for the formula but just the shades I love reds and I love coppers and things like that but this just has more shades that I would wear on an everyday basis I think and that I could make more looks with than just the 35O. I will go ahead and swatch some of these shades for you because they are incredible. The shimmers are out of this world. I think they apply really nicely with a finger or with a brush with MAC Fix Plus on it. It just, just intensifies the shade and kind of gives it more of a metallic look which I really like. So this is kind of like a greeny bronzy color which I'm really loving but this is just one swipe. I don't know if this will translate very well but is that not just incredible? And we'll give some of these coppery shades here. These are like some coppery orange shades. I mean, they're just beautiful. We'll give another one here. I have a couple favorites, and they are these darker, like, black shimmers. Look at that. Look at that. Could you die? That is like a black brown. It's like a really dark brown with, um, like, a black undertone to it. It's just gorgeous. And then my other favorite one, which this is probably my number one favorite shimmer, is this, like, chocolatey brown with, like, an... Um, olive undertone. Look at that. That's my number one right there, I think. Oh, that is so beautiful. And then on the other side, this is one of my favorites. This is one of the satin shades. It's like a purpley satin shade, and it's gorgeous. And it blends so nicely. I mean, I'm not even really pressing into these, and it's just... Look at that. Oh, let's do one of these like transition-y red colors. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Now, I will say, and you probably just saw that when I swatched that, there is a lot of fallout. These, there's a lot of kick up with these shadows, whether it's with the mattes or it's with the shimmers, there's a lot of kick up. Um, but again, at the price point, I don't think that would deter anyone from purchasing it. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch some of these um, shimmer shades from the 35R palette against some of the shimmer shades from the 35O. That way you can see kind of the difference in the undertones and the shades that you're getting. Okay, I hope you can see this. The top row is the 35O and the bottom row is the 35R. The 35R is mostly like bronzes and golds. Um, it also has some of those purpley tones, but it's more bronzy and gold, whereas the 35O is really rusty and orange. Um, so I think that they are completely different. I think it's totally up to you and what you would use on an everyday basis or if you think you would use them both. But honestly, I'm really impressed with the 35R and I'm actually really happy that I decided to purchase it. I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. And I really enjoyed the look that I created today. And this is the only thing I have on my eyes is just this palette. So without further ado, we'll get into the demo. Okay, I have you zoomed in so you can see kind of up close what I'm doing. We're going to take this third shade over and we're going to put it in our crease in just a little bit on the lid. And I'm just going to use a fluffy blending brush to do that. And just kind of blend it out, make sure there's no harsh lines. And just stamp a little bit of it onto the lid area. Next we're going to take this warm terracotta brown color and we're going to use the same brush and we're going to pop it into the crease but a little bit lower. We're going to put it primarily on the lid but a little bit in the crease. Next we're going to take a little bit of this purple shade here. This is more of like a satin finish and we're not going to do a t whole lot of it because we're going to go in with it in just a minute. Um, but we're just going to take another, this is more of a flat blender brush. This is the E25 from Sigma. And we're just going to focus that on the outer corner of the eye. Okay, and next we are going to take one of these really shimmery colors right here. And it is kind of like a greenish goldish brown color. Um, and I'm going to take it on the Sigma E56 shader brush, but I'm going to wet it a little bit with some Fix Plus first. 
and you really don't have to wet these shadows. I mean, they are so saturated and pigmented, but I feel like because I want to use it on a brush that saturating it with some Fix Plus will just make it apply a little bit smoother. And we are just gonna pop that onto a majority of the lid. Um, we're not gonna take it too far over to the ends of the eye, but we're gonna leave it on a majority of the lid here. I know that was a really helpful description. See, that's pretty. It's like a greeny gold brown color. It kind of has, it's kind of like a gold with an olive undertone, which is so pretty. Now we're gonna go back in with that same flat blending brush and back in with that same um, satiny purple shade. And we are going to focus that on the outer corner again. For the very inner corner, we are going to take a mixture of these two shimmery shades right here, and we're gonna take that same shader brush, um, we're gonna use the other side of it and wet it with some Fix Plus again. Going back in with that bronzy green gold color and just kind of blending it out a little bit. We just want it to look like a fade rather than just like a stark line. Go back in with that first fluffy brush and just kind of go back up into the crease area here and above the crease and just blend it out. For our lower lash line, I am going to take a mixture of the two crease colors that we used, this one right here and then this terracotta color right here. And I'm just gonna take it on a fluffy pencil brush. This one's a little larger, it's the Morphe E18. Um, so it just has more of a dome shape. And I'm just gonna mix those two colors together, tap it off and run it under the lower lash line. And we're gonna take a flat definer brush and use that same purple satin shade. And we're gonna stamp it really close to our lower lash line. Go back in with that same pencil brush and just give it another quick blend. And we're gonna take a smaller pencil brush, this is the Morphe E36, and go with those two uh, light shimmers at the top and we are going to uh, place that into our inner corner of our eye. Okay, so just put on some mascara. You could add winged liner if you wanted to. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna throw on some mascara and some lashes and you've got yourself a look. Okay, so as you can see, the shadows blend beautifully and the pigment shows up. Happy with that. Overall, I'm really impressed with this palette and I highly suggest getting it if you've been on the fence and you don't know if you want it or not. I am super impressed, so I think you probably would be too. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful for some of you. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Just hit that little red box and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.